Shabbat Shalom, everyone. I'm hoping everyone's doing well. So I want to come up here really quickly because I was actually getting ready to um, head off to bed, but then I noticed um, I came across a video on YouTube, and I want to post it here on my channel, but I wanted to do um, some commentary on it as well. Um, now this video is about um, a Christian pastor that some of you Hebrews may have heard of him, some may not. Um, Pastor Omar Tibida, I think that's his name. Um, but anyway, uh, you may recognize him in the video. Um, he's a Christian pastor. I don't know where his church is, um, but he teaches things about Hebrews. Um, but this particular video that I came across, I am, um, let me first give this disclaimer. I'm not here to slander anyone or to talk trash about anyone or put anybody down. Um, I do not follow his ministry. I have heard a few of his videos and I have shared one video on my webpage, um, YouTube page, and that was um, his video about the history of Olauda Ekiano, um, the Hebrew evil slave, um, because that, the, the history that he gave was very um, interesting and informative to me, so I wanted to share that. But outside of that, I do not follow his teachings. Um, I do not submit to... Um, Nothing else. I, don't, I really don't know much about what he's um, teaching 100%. Well, I'm going to say 100%. But I don't know much about where he's going now because I, what I have listened to him was about, gosh, maybe a year ago or so. Maybe longer than that. No, probably about a year ago. And um, back then, I just wasn't really clicking with him. And so I just kind of didn't really fo follow him. And, or I never followed him, but I stopped listening to him. But um, this interesting video that he has... Uh, he's been filmed and recorded himself speaking about. Um, he said some very inf interesting things. Um, and a couple of things I want to, well, actually, I'm going to address everything he said. Um, first of all, the first thing that he mentions in the video is about him saying, you know, don't go off on the deep end, uh, you know, don't come in here wearing fringes or anything like that. Um, and, you know, he's saying that that's pretty much, you know, changing your whole religion, um, for, I guess, from being. A religion of Christianity to being in the religion of I don't know um, Hebrews we don't have a religion we have laws we have statutes we have commandments we have ordinances that came from the most high on how we are to live our life spiritually and physically with each other with the most high um, and with Gentile nations so we don't have a religion um, so I'm not sure what he means by that but then the other thing is that you know the fringes you know, he's telling people to not wear fringes. Well, Numbers 15 and 38 says that we are to wear fringes and we are to put them upon the border, borders of our garments um, and with a ribbon of blue. And whenever we see them and do this for all of our generations throughout, we are to remember and remind, remind ourselves of the ordinances, the commandments, the laws and statutes that the Most High gave us. Now, I know I'm one that talks a lot about, I have said before about, um, you know, different Hebrews wearing fringes. And in case anyone's unclear, I don't speak against wearing fringes at all. I don't believe that you are not supposed to. We are definitely supposed to. That's a commandment. My issue is when you put on fringes, or was, when you put on fringes and all of a sudden now that makes you righteous or that makes you, um, you know, when people, when they, when they look the part, but they're really not playing the part, that's what I'm not a, friend, a fan of. Um, so, again, we are to wear fringes, and that is a commandment, but simply putting on fringes does not make us righteous or holy or, um, you know, that makes us obedient, but that doesn't change our spirit, it doesn't change our heart, um, okay, praying and fasting and all that, uh, the Ruach, receiving the Ruach, the way the scriptures tells us to receive it, um, believing in the Messiah for the remission of our sins and being, redeeming us, that's those things that we put in, you know, um, those are the things that changes our heart, not just wearing fringes. The next thing I want to address is that he said that um, he was against anyone trying to influ infuse the law on anyone. Well, I mean, if you do a simple stat a simple Google search on keeping my statutes, you'll see that there are a number of scriptures, <laughs> especially the book of Deuteronomy. I know off the top of my head for a fact is riddled. If you read that whole, not the whole book, chapter the whole book rather not chapter if you read that whole book it's riddled with the most high saying if you keep my laws and my statutes my commandments if you keep my statutes if you keep my commandments you know that is the law 
So how are you leading someone and you're telling them that you're preaching from the Bible, but yet the Bible says, keep my laws and statutes and commandments. And you're saying that you're against anyone trying to infuse someone telling them you're, you're against someone trying to infuse the law into someone's life. That is um, perplexing. And then another thing that he said is that um, anyone that keeps the law or, you know, teaches, tries to control the way someone thinks, you know, the minute you start following the law, that means you're in a cult. Um, again, there's so many scriptures in the Bible that speaks contrary to that. One in particular says, you know, Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. <laughs> And it shall come to pass, I'm looking at my computer, and it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of Yahweh thy Elohim, to observe and do all his commandments, or his laws, which I command thee that is this day, that Yahweh thy Elohim will set thee on high above all nations. Um, that doesn't say that if you keep a, if you keep the law, you'll all of a sudden become a cult. Um, again, he's not teaching scripture. Uh, and, and I mean, that's just one verse. So I don't know where he's getting his information from. Then another thing that the last thing he said, he was talking about clean and unclean and all this other stuff. And, you know, that's, that's, that's cultic. If you're keeping, you know, if you're being clean and unclean. Um, but again, Leviticus 11 and one, <laughs> and the most high spake unto Moses and to Aaron saying unto them, Speaking unto the speaking unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. And it goes on to speak about what is clean and what is unclean. But verse one in chapter eleven of the book of Leviticus says, The most high said this. How is that cult how is that a cult? You know, if you want to be Christian like the Lord said this, isn't that the God that you say you serve? I don't understand. So following the Lord now is cultic. -ish? I don't understand. Or following the most high. Is that what you're saying? I'm not sure. I'm confused. Um, but the point of the matter is, is that you have to be so careful who you listen to and who you are letting pour into your life. Um, I, there are a lot of wicked people out there. The church is not the place where the most high dwells. Um, and I'm not saying that every person in the church is wicked or unrighteous. I do believe that there are people that have a right heart that are coming to this truth, that will still, that are still coming into the truth, that will eventually wake up. And when I say eventually wake up, I'm not saying in, to this, the extent of they heard it, but they are just hardening their hearts and maybe one day they'll turn to it. I mean, there are some people I believe that may not have never heard this before or may have heard it, but still are not clear on what it all means, you know, asking the most high to give them clarity and understanding. And I say that I can tell you that for a fact, because I was one of those people. I was in the church for all my life. I was literally born in the church. Okay. The day I was born, my mother had me on a Sunday morning back in 87. And when they had me, um, they were on, the church was on the line. <laughs> Someone at the church was on the line. And when they you know, my mom, my parents told them that I was born. They told the minister or whomever at the church, and they announced it over the, you know, in the service. So I was born in church, literally. Um, you know, uh, but the Most High has had His hand on my life the whole time. Okay, like when I when I was born, my my parents didn't, they told me they didn't have a name for me. They didn't know what to name me, <laughs> and it was like three days had gone by, and then the Most High led my mother to Luke, and um, I think John where he gave her the name Joanna Elizabeth. Um, so to my, both of mine, I'm named after two Israelite women, the mother of John and then Joanna, the, one, the woman, the woman, one of the women that uh, ministered to Jesus, Messiah, um, during his life and after his crucifixion. Um, and this is the name that the Most High gave her. So he had his name, I mean, he had his hand upon me my whole life, but I was in the church. I was going to church all the time. I loved the Lord. I was faithful, but it was until about maybe 2014, 13 or so, when I really started feeling like, you know what, really about 2013, I was like, this ain't working. Something is off. By 2014, I was completely out of every church. That, you know, I wasn't going to a church at all. And I started visiting a church um, the summer of 2016 um and i was still listening to different paths i was listening to miles monroe in 2014 i was listening um but i wasn't attending any church i hadn't been to an actual church in 
months, years. Um, 2016, I started visiting a church because I wanted that feel of connection, that assembly connection again. But it was fun. It was, you know, cute. It was religious. But it wasn't what I wanted. To, it wasn't what I was doing. That After that, it was the summer 2016. That fall 2016 is when the Most High revealed his, himself to me again and his truth. And I've never looked back since. Um, and now I know exactly why he was pulling me out of um, the church. And he, the way he let me out, it was really like kind of a gradual process because I guess he knew if he did it all at once for me, I would have been confused and overwhelmed and probably would have rejected it. But anyway, um, the point of the matter is, is that, you know, I was in the church. I grew up in the church, but he led me out because, you know, those who have heart for righteousness, eventually something's going to start pricking at them. <laughs> like this isn't making sense. So that's why I'm, I'm, I don't go into killing the church or bashing the church or bashing every pastor. I'm not going to say that everybody that's in a church or still identifying as a Christian is evil. Now, I will say that a lot of them are not right. And this video, it goes to show you that just because someone's talking a little bit of truth, there's a there's always some little bit, some there's always some mix of, well, I'm going to say always, but if you find a mix of un unrighteousness, untruth in there, you can't follow this person. This man is teaching about Hebrews and the history of Ebos and El Olauda Yano and whatever else he's saying. I don't know. But at the same time, he's sitting up here saying he's against anybody that's going to infuse the law. If you follow the law, you're cultic. If you put on fringes, you've changed your religion. And unclean and, and eating clean and unclean fruit and animals is <laughs> cultic. But we all know eating pork is infused with germs and parasites that will live in your body forever okay i mean it's just i again like i said in the beginning of this video i'm not going to i'm not here to bash nobody i ain't here to sit up here and slanderize this man and then run him through the mud i ain't got time for that i'm not interested in that but i will say to those who may be following him or who may have listened to him um i ain't gonna tell you what to do i'm just gonna tell you to be careful be prayerful about who you're listening to and this is why you cannot idolize someone or if any i'm not saying anybody's doing this i'm just saying a lot of our people tend to have a tendency to say oh i like the way that man teach and i like that pastor he preached real good and so we put all of our trust and our hope and our faith in this person looking to them to lead us in all righteousness and we don't even do any studying in our own we don't even seek the most high on our own we expect the pastor or whomever we follow whatever to everything he's saying is right whether he's intentionally you know you know, which he may not be right all the time. He may intentionally be trying to deceive or he may be deceiving just because he ain't studied or he just don't know. That's why you have to be prayerful. You have to be led by the spirit. You have to have the Ruach on your own. And yes, there are people that the most I put over his people to preach and teach and feed his flock. But it ain't these pastors out here in the church. And even when you have people that teach and, and preach and things of that nature, the Paul, Paul said, be like the Bereans. Go back and search the scriptures for yourself because the Bereans, I think it's in the book of Acts, they they listened to Paul, but they were like, okay, that's good, but I'm going to go find it for myself, okay? And if you find anything, that's, uh, anybody you're listening to, if you find anything that they're saying that does not line up with the scriptures and they're adamantly preaching it, you need to turn that person off immediately. So I, I pray this brother um, gets it right before, you know, judgment day comes for him or in general. But, uh, you know, we got to be so careful who we're listening to. So anyway, hope you all have a great Shabbat. Um, and I'll see you in the next video. Shalom. And um, one more, actually, one more thing that I just thought about. Um, the church that I was referencing and speaking about that I was born into, um, so to speak, that actually was a, um, I don't know what you'll call it. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it's a temple or tabernacle, but the church name was um, Bethlehem. And uh, it was a ministry in New Jersey. Um, and they actually kept the Feast of the Most High, um, and they were the ones that actually introduced my parents into studying about, um, the Feast of the Most High, um, the Shabbat and things of that nature. <clears throat> and before, um, my parents were in that ministry, they grew up typical Christian, you know, lifestyle, um, Sunday worship and, um. What, I, what else? Uh, you know, the pagan holidays and eating pork and stuff like that. But when they came into that ministry, 
um, they began to teach them about these things. Now, they didn't teach them about being Hebrews. I don't know if they knew or not, um, or if they did and just didn't feel led to. I don't know. Um, and they did still have Sunday worship. And I, I think that was probably because, um, you know, they just were... I don't know. I can't speak for that. I don't know. But I do know that they did keep Passover and things of that nature. So they weren't entirely, um, you know, 100% keeping uh, Shabbat or, you know, having services on Saturdays. Not from what I recall. If I'm wrong, I can do an update video and address that. Um, but I do believe that they did have Sunday services. Um, if They may have had a Shabbat service. I don't remember. We've gone back like 30 years. <laughs> but anyway, um, so my point of the matter is, is that that ministry, even though it was, you know, a quote unquote church, um, they were the ministry that actually led my parents into um, studying, my father particularly, into studying about um, pagan holidays and Shabbat and keeping, you know, Passover. So those are things that actually I was born into. And that goes, if many of you have heard my story before that, you know why I wasn't raised keeping Christmas. I was raised not wearing pants. I was raised not eating pork. The first time I ate pork, I was in fourth grade and I tried, tried a piece of pepperoni that small off of a friend's pizza. And y'all, I got so sick <laughs> in fourth grade. I threw up in that bathroom, in that school bathroom. I had to, It was right at the end of the day. So I went home and I was still sick. I mean, and it was, I'm telling you, if anybody remember those little pizzas that we used to get in school that <laughs> were in the plastic bag. Um, and the pepperoni were like little tiny cubes about that big. I tried one piece and I got so sick. Now I went on to eat a little bit more bacon here and there as I got older, but I've never eaten pork. Like I don't even know what to do with a pork chop. I've never had a pork chop. I've never purchased pork in my life as far as like grocery shopping. Um, so I kind of was born and raised into this thing. It's been inbred in me. I strayed away and did my own thing a little bit, but I never really went out there in the world far like that. But my point of the matter is again to say that. You, I don't believe in bashing every church because you don't know who the Most High is dealing with and you don't know who may be doing things that's in the church but are in transition, who are coming into the truth and who are transitioning out. You know, some stop abruptly and some take their time to adjust to it for whatever reasons they have. Um, but I did want to say that, you know, that church that we were, I was born into, it was a, it was a, a Hebrew, so to, quote unquote, church. Um, so, you know, we just have to be careful and be prayerful for those who are still in the church. Those who love the most high will come out and hear and those who don't, woe unto them. Shalom.